Hey, Betty. So I heard through the grapevine that you and your husband are actually considering opening a bakery. Tell me if it's true, or if it's just another one of your wild pipe dreams. Hello, Nicole. How have you been? It's been quite some time since you last had a chat and caught up. Yeah, yeah, like I give a damn about your irrelevant babbling. Now quit stalling and give me a straightforward answer to my question. Are you, or are you not, planning to open a bakery? What's the matter? Why are you acting so hostile towards me? It's true that we have a plan to open a bakery. And we're actively saving up for it, yes. However, at this point, it's still in the early stages, and we haven't made any concrete decisions yet. Can you believe the audacity? You had the nerve to steal my idea? It was mine and my husband's brainchild from the beginning! We've been planning to open a bakery for ages. And now you have the gall to claim you want to do it too? Let me set the record straight. You're nothing more than a lowly idea thief. I'm warning you. Wait, what? Seriously? I had absolutely no clue that you were also planning to venture into the bakery business. You never mentioned it to me. So how can you accuse me of stealing your idea? I don't care. It's my idea, and you have zero rights to claim it as yours. Consider this a warning. Drop your pathetic business idea right now. Don't think for a second that I'll go easy on you just because we're related by marriage. I see you right through you, Betty. You're nothing more than a jealous wannabe trying to imitate my success. Well, newsflash, you can't copy everything I do like some sad little copycat. Your lack of originality is truly disappointing, but not surprising. Look, I swear I'm not lying. I genuinely had no clue that you and your husband had the same idea of starting a bakery. Believe it or not, it's something I've been passionate about since I was a little kid. And I've been putting a ton of effort into making that dream a reality. I haven't quit my job to fully dedicate myself to my new bakery. So there's absolutely no way I'm going to give up on it. Just because you're telling me to. Wow. Why do you have to be so stubborn? Anyway, do whatever the hell you want. It won't matter. My bakery is going to crush yours like a little ant. I've got everything it takes to make it big. First of all, I have the land that my dear old father left me before he kicked the bucket. Let me tell you, it's the perfect location for a thriving business. There's even an old liquor shop already there. So all I have to do is renovate it and voila! A bakery! Easy peasy, right? Oh, and let's not forget the substantial amount of money that my father left to Margaret in his will. I'm going to invest that money in my shop and make it the most famous bakery in the entire damn neighborhood. Okay, I get it. I genuinely hope your shop thrives and that your business is successful. However, if you don't mind me asking, do you possess the necessary skills and passion for baking? Ugh, seriously? What is up with this stupid question? Who cares about skills or passion or any of that crap? I'll just throw some cash at it and hire minions to do the grunt work. I've got the dough, you know, and I'll be lording over them as the big boss. Why would I ever stoop to do the dirty work myself? Ugh, that's totally not my jam. Oh, alright. I understand now. 
I hope your business thrives and you achieve all your goals. Wow, what a bummer. Seriously, chatting with someone as clueless as you has been a total waste of time. You're like living in a whole different world, completely out of touch with reality. Anyway, enough of this nonsense. I've got way more important things to focus on. Gotta figure out how to make my bakery the coolest spot in town. You know what I mean? And let's face it, you're just a copycat. That's why your shop will never even come close to the awesomeness of mine. Adios, loser. Well, 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 Betty. I must say, your pitiful little bakery is truly a sight to behold. It's tiny, smelly, and downright unattractive. And let's not forget about its prime location for failure. I mean, who in their right mind would even spare a second to glance at your pathetic excuse for a bakery? Most people would just stroll on by without a care. Face it, Betty, you're nothing but a complete and utter loser compared to someone as magnificent as me. <laughs> I'm sorry, but are you reaching out to me just to say these things? If that's all you called me for, then I suggest you stop bothering me. You're being very rude and disrespectful. Ugh, give me a break. Don't get all defensive with me now. I'm just trying to check in on you for crying out loud. Can't I show some care for my oh-so-beloved sister-in-law once in a blue moon? I'm just being incredibly nice and thoughtful here, you know. You claim to care about me, but from where I'm standing, it feels like you actually enjoy putting me down and mocking my bakery. By the way, let's not forget that we're not family. So technically, you're now my ex-sister-in-law. Just thought I'd remind you. Oh, please. Don't tell me you actually believed what I said. Can't you see that it was all out of my deep concern for you? Seriously, I'm just looking out for your best interests here. Let's face it. Your sorry excuse for a store won't survive more than a measly month. So why don't you do yourself a favor and shut it down already? Oh, and let's not forget about the rent you have to pay for that dump. Trust me, you're flushing your hard-earned money down the drain for absolutely nothing. Who do you think you are making judgments about my bakery? Just mind your own business, Nicole. <laughs> Look who's talking. Jealous much, loser? <laughs> Take a good look at my thriving bakery. It's barely been open for a month, and I've already had a constant stream of hundreds of guests flocking in and out every single day. And guess what? I don't even have to shell out a single penny for the damn rent. On top of that, I've got my own personal waitress who works for free. My own dear mother, no less. <laughs> Wait, hold up. Are you seriously telling me that you've got your own mom working at your bakery? And she's working for free? Seriously? Oh, please. What's the big deal? She's living under my roof, so obviously she's got to work for me. It's only natural, right? I mean, do you seriously expect me to have some lazy, deadweight lounging around my house 24-7, doing absolutely nothing? I don't tolerate freeloaders, okay? You know the saying. If you want something, you better work your butt off to earn it. I give her food and shelter, and that's all she ever needs. You know what? It's downright wrong of you to make Margaret work without giving her a single penny. In case you didn't know, 
It's clear violation of the law. Every single worker deserves to be compensated for their efforts. And you're completely disregarding that. Wow, you really don't grasp the concept, do you? She's my mom, which means she's obligated to sacrifice herself for my sake. That's what she's been doing her entire life. So why should it stop now? Plus, she's been a stay-at-home mom all this time, leaving the burden of earning money to my late dad. So it's only fair that she starts pulling her weight and helps me rake in some cash, right? Let me tell you, she wouldn't dare utter a word against it. So who the hell do you think you are to criticize me, huh? All right, I suppose. If Margaret is cool with working for you, then I won't make a fuss about it. I'm not her daughter-in-law anymore. So it's not my place to meddle in your family affairs. Just do me a favor, though. Make sure you take good care of her. She's an amazing woman, and she deserves all the love and care from her loved ones. Oh, please. If I were in your shoes, I wouldn't waste a second caring about other people's businesses. Can't you see it? Your own business is crumbling to pieces, and it's going to take a freaking miracle to prevent it from going bankrupt. <laughs> so go ahead and relish in your pathetic struggle with that sorry excuse for a bakery while it still lasts. Hello, Betty? Are you still up? I know it might not be the best time to talk, but would it be possible for me to come over to your place now, please? I contacted everyone I know, but they all refused to help me. Margaret? Why are you texting me so late? And why do you want to come over to my house right now? Is everything okay? Well, actually, it's Nicole. She and her husband have, quite rudely, decided to evict me from their home. Can you believe it? They practically forced me out with so much as a jacket or a penny to my name. Apparently, they're blaming my lack of skill at their bakery. According to them, I walk too slowly and I'm too clumsy, causing their guests to wait for too long. Oh no. I can't believe Nicole would stoop so low and treat her own family this way. Where are you right now? Let me know. I'm coming to pick you up right now. Oh, don't worry about me, dear. I can manage on my own. I don't want to inconvenience you, especially since it's late. Just be kind enough to open the door for me when I arrive. That's all I ask of you. No, Margaret. Please find a safe place to stay and send me your location. I'm coming to get you. You don't deserve to be treated this way, and I won't let you go through it alone. Your safety and well-being are my priority, and I'll ensure you're taken care of. Thank you, buddy, for your kindness. I'm truly at a loss for words. I assure you, I won't be a burden or cause any trouble. If you could allow me to stay at your place for a few days... Margaret, how are you holding up? I hope staying at my house for these past few days have brought you some comfort. Are you feeling any better? Hey, Betty. I just wanted to say thanks for letting me crash at your place for the past few days. Oh, you're seriously the kindest. I gotta tell you, I'm feeling so much better now. Your hospitality and support have made a huge difference, and I can't thank you enough. Margaret, don't say that. You're my mother-in-law. It's only natural for me to take care of you. It's not a big deal at all. I'm happy to be there for you and help out whenever I can. But technically, I'm not your mother-in-law anymore, am I? I mean, my son tragically passed away in that car accident, along with my husband. And you've moved on and remarried, right? Sorry for bringing it up and bothering you with this. 
No need to worry. I'll figure out a new place to stay as soon as possible. Margaret, I was thinking, why don't you stay with me and my husband? Huh? What do you mean? You know, you're welcome to stay with us as long as you need. Really, it's no trouble. We have plenty of space, and it would be great to have you around. No need to stress about finding a new place. Just consider it, all right? But don't you feel annoyed having me around? I'm not even your mother-in-law anymore, so you don't have to go out of your way to be nice to me, you know? Honestly, I feel kind of ashamed about it, Betty. What's wrong, Margaret? Why do you feel ashamed? Did I do something that offended you? I want to say sorry for the way I mistreated you during the time you were my son's wife. I realize now that I gave you a hard time simply because I didn't like you. Now I find myself in a position where I need your help after being kicked out of my own daughter's house. I suppose it's karma coming back to me. Honestly, buddy, I don't deserve your kindness. If you feel the need to scold me, go ahead. I won't say anything to defend myself. What are you talking about, Margaret? That's all in the past now. And honestly, I don't even remember much of it. The important thing is that you've owned up to your mistakes and taken responsibility for them. That really matters. So please stay with me and my husband. We'd be thrilled to have you around. Thank you, Betty. I truly appreciate your kindness. However, I can't help but worry that my might end up being a burden to you. I'm aware that your bakery hasn't been doing well lately, and you're already juggling the financial responsibilities of running it. Don't worry, Margaret. I know my husband and I will figure something out. No worries. Yeah, I know the bakery hasn't been doing great lately. We don't have the best conditions to run a business, and financially, we're not exactly rolling in dough either. But hey, we'll find a way to make it work. Hey, Betty, I've been thinking, maybe, would it be possible for me to come with you to the bakery tomorrow? Oh, absolutely. Is there anything specific you need at the store? Just let me know, and I'll make sure to get it for you. I was just thinking if there's anything I can do to lend you a hand. I'd love to help out, however I can. You know, back in the day, I used to assist your father-in-law with his liquor store. So I've got a bit of experience when it comes to running a business. Let me know if there's anything specific you need help with. Yeah, it's a real bummer that liquor store had to shut down. It's tough when all the tricks of the trade are known only by your husband and father-in-law. They know how to keep things running smoothly in that kind of business. So, do you think it would be possible for you to take me to your shop? I'd really like to lend you a hand and help you out with anything you need. Absolutely. You can come with me to my bakery anytime. In fact, you're always welcome there. I appreciate your willingness to help out, and I'm sure we'll find something for you to do. Let's head over there together tomorrow. That's wonderful. I'll do everything I can to assist you. Hey, Betty. What's up with your bakery? Are you pulling some shady business or what? Wait, Nicole? What's that supposed to mean, huh? Why the hell are all those idiots rushing to your pathetic cake shop? It's like your miserable store is the center of attention in this godforsaken town. It's freaking unbelievable. You must be pulling some slimy tricks to lure those morons in, aren't you? Come on, spill the beans, you deceitful witch. Did you lace your damn cakes with drugs to make those fools crave more? Nah, no way. I never pull off something like that. 
It's totally against the law, you know. Well then, enlighten me, genius. How the hell did your shabby bakery manage to achieve success in such a short span of time? You must have pulled off some shady tricks behind everyone's backs, didn't you? Care to tell me the honest truth, you sneaky little weasel? I already told you, I didn't do anything sketchy or illegal. Sure, I made some changes to the bakery, but they were all Margaret's suggestions. Changes? What changes? Tell me. My patience is wearing really thin right now, you jerk. Oh, what a brilliant idea! Why on earth would I reveal the secret behind my store success to you? Oh wait, I get it now. You want to be a total copycat, steal my ideas for your own store. How original are you? What? How dare you label me as a copycat? It's actually you who stole my brilliant idea of starting a bakery. So, in all fairness, you should make it up to me by revealing your store's secret to success, right? Seems only fair, don't you think? Sorry, I can't go into all the nitty-gritty details, but in a nutshell. Margaret guided me on how to set up my bakery in a way that really taps into customers' desires. She's a pro at understanding and analyzing customer psychology, which helped us find you in our products and services to match their preferences. Oh, and let's not forget, Margaret is a superstar when it comes to customer service. She knows how to strike up and gain new conversations and make them feel right at home. It's not just about the delicious food we offer. Our customers also love the warming atmosphere we've created. Huh? What the heck are you saying? Can you please explain all this in simple English? Honestly, I don't understand a single word of what you just blabbered. Wow, you're seriously clueless, aren't you? Just take it as my mom giving me a hand with my business, okay? Forget about all the fancy details I just mentioned. Wait. So Margaret actually helped you out with your bakery business? That's got to be a joke. She's completely useless. Can't even handle the simplest jobs as a waitress. She once managed to drop an entire tray of baked goods on the floor, wasting all of the cakes. What a disaster! Thinking about all the trouble she caused me in my shop still makes my blood boil. She's nothing but a burden, I tell you. Well, that's because you didn't let her do what she's actually good at. Now she's the manager of my bakery, and let me tell you, she is thriving. I can totally count on Margaret to help me out and run the shop, just like a well-oiled machine. But it's like totally impossible. My mom doing something super hard and fancy. Nah, no chance. You're messing with me, right? You're definitely lying. If you think I'm lying, then there's no use in me trying to change your mind, right? Anyway, if you said all you want to say, I guess it's time to wrap up our conversation here. Goodbye, Nicole. Hold up, hold up. We're not done talking here. You still haven't answered all my questions. Where do you think you're off to? Get back here right now, yo, Betty. You there, Betty? Hey, Margaret, you around? You mentioned you were gonna grab something in the morning, but it's way past that. I've been trying to call you like a bunch of times, but you haven't been picking up. Is something wrong? Are you okay, Margaret? I'm really worried about you. Can you cut it out with your annoying calls and messages? My mom's right here, and newsflash, she's not coming back. Okay, so do us all a favor and stop being a pest. Wait, what? What do you mean by that? Why is Margaret with you at the moment? Obviously, she's my mom, so it's a no-brainer that she's obliged to come running back to me and lend a hand with my business. Like, duh! Can't you see? 
She despises you, always has. Especially since you married my late brother. The only reason she was acting nice to you is because I kicked her out of my house. But now that I'm graciously allowing her back into my life, she's more than happy to stay on my side. It's crystal clear if you ask me. What? But the situation just just doesn't add up. Sure, Margaret and I have had our fair share of clashes in the past, but we worked things out, you know? As a matter of fact, Margaret even apologized to me in person. It's highly unlikely that she would suddenly abandon me and return to you without any valid reason. Something doesn't seem right. Oh, please, save me the sob story. Here's a juicy piece of info for you. It's all in your deluded little head. My mother despises you. Always has. She's been playing you like a fool. She was just acting all nice and helpful to gather intel for me about your pathetic bakery. Mark my words. In no time, my bakery will obliterate your puny little excuse for a business and reduce it to ashes. So don't start celebrating your so-called victory just yet, because I'm the one who'll have the last laugh. <laughs> Betty, you devious witch. So turns out you fed me a bunch of lies, huh? Well, I've had enough of this nonsense. I'm sending that utterly useless Margaret right back to where she came from, your clutches. What's with the flip-flopping, Nicole? At first you were really enthusiastic about having Margaret live with you again, practically insisting on bringing her back home. Seriously, what is going on? Last time I checked, Margaret isn't some disposable item you can just use and throw away when she no longer serves you. She's a living, breathing human being, for crying out loud. Show some respect. You freaking lied to me. Margaret is a complete joke. Nowhere near as capable as you hyped her up to be. She's just a dumb, senile hag who can't even handle basic freaking math. She's not even fit to handle a cash register, let alone run my freaking bakery. I stupidly believed your garbage and handed over the reins to her. And now everything's going straight down the drain. And you know what? It's all your damn fault. You conned me into bringing her back, you manipulative piece of crap. Oh man, this is too good. Margaret spilled the beans to me. Your bakery is tanking it, isn't it? Ha <laughs> ha. But hey, let's not put all the blame on Margaret, right? She just kind of, you know, accelerated the whole bankruptcy thing a tad. It's like she gave you a little push down that slippery slope. What? So you've been secretly keeping in touch with her? I mean, I thought she despised you and had my back. But now I'm starting to wonder... Was she straight up lying to my face this whole time? What the heck? Well, how does it feel to get a taste of your own medicine? You treated her as if she was disposable. And now that you finally recognize her potential, you've coerced her into returning to work for you. To be honest, that's the most despicable thing I've ever heard. Tell me, did you and Margaret join forces to wreck my business? I want the straight up honest truth. No BS. Well, like I said, Margaret kind of just helped things move along a bit. Truth is, she already saw the writing on the wall. She paid attention to how you and your husband ran the business and came to the conclusion that you guys just don't have what it takes to be successful owners. I mean, you don't have a handle on the financial side. You lack passion and baking skills, and let's be real, you're not exactly the friendliest person. Sooner or later, it was bound to catch up with you. Margaret saw all of that, so she just let your store run itself into the ground. Meanwhile, she actively supported and promoted my business to all your frequent customers. What? This is insane! 
You have no idea how much money I had to borrow to invest in that bakery. If it's going down the drain, how the heck am I supposed to scrape up the cash to pay it all back? This is seriously messed up. Oh, wait a sec. Margaret still has a fat stack of money from my dad's inheritance. I could totally make her foot the bill for my debts. That's right. <laughs> Do you honestly believe that Margaret would just hand over her money to you? That's pure fantasy, my dear ex-sister-in-law. Margaret is her own person, and she's not under your control. It's up to you to handle your own debts. No one's going to swoop in and save you from this one. Looks like karma's finally catching up, huh? Well, good luck, because you're going to need all the luck you can get to navigate through this sticky situation. Shortly after Margaret's departure, Nicole's bakery unfortunately had to close down. To make matters worse, Nicole and her husband found themselves burdened with an overwhelming amount of debt, resorting to borrowing from loan sharks. The inheritance Nicole received from her father wasn't enough to repay all the debts, leading her to flee from their previous home to escape the harassment of these unsavory lenders. Once Nicole's bakery became vacant, Margaret generously offered me the opportunity to use her old store as my second bakery location. With a fresh makeover, it had become a thriving part of my business. Margaret happily took on the role of store manager, providing valuable guidance and contributing to its success. Remarkably, my husband and I now found ourselves living harmoniously with my ex-mother-in-law. While the past hold its share of sadness, particularly with the tragic accident involving my late father-in-law and husband. Margaret and I are resolute in focusing on the present and building new, joyful memories together.